From the Kodesh Family Church, Germantown, Pastor Happy will inspire you with the practical and down-to-earth Bible-based teachings that will refresh, energize, and motivate you to do your best for the Lord. Join Pastor Happy now as he ministers the Word of God. As you Why don't you just raise your hand and just thank the Lord tonight? If there's any thankfulness in your heart? Just cast your eyes to the great and mighty things that the Lord has done. You're standing here right now. It's a testimony of the grace of the Lord. And just thank Him. He has done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. You have done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. you for what you've done our praise and glory goes to you our worship and adoration is to you Lord thank you for breaking chains chains Lord that have held us for so long thank you for pulling down strongholds strongholds of darkness Lord thank you for your healing power the Lord God, what has sought to destroy, Lord, you have brought restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. You have lifted up the lame Lord to rise and walk, the blind Lord to open their eyes to see. Oh Lord, those that are troubled, Lord, give them a joyful heart. I'm so thankful, Lord. Thankful, Spirit of the Living God. That when you release your power, there is nothing else that can stand against your power, Lord. Give you all the glory. Thank you for grace. Thank you for grace. Thank you for grace tonight. To everyone who believe. So you've given the power. Power to be called the children of God. And 
if we are children of God, then we are heirs of the righteousness of God. Send forth your word. The healers of our infirmities, healers of our diseases, set us all off on our feet, Lord. We will run like the deer, panting after the water brooks, Lord. Let everyone who is chained, Lord, walk out of here liberated in Jesus' name. Thank you, the Lord. You are all powerful. That when we call upon your name, you hear us. May your glory shine, Lord. May darkness fade away in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you all the glory. And the saints of God shout, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, you want to take Amen. Ask your neighbor, are you happy? And happy to be here. Brother Santi, come closer to the throne. Come closer to me. Closer to me. How you doing, my dear? Hallelujah. Are you happy to be here? So, convention is a time when we set aside special time. Which means when you come to a convention, it's not the usual normal. Yeah? And so that is why political people also set a day aside and say we're going for convention. Uh, the rivals and say this one Republicans will go and then Democrats will go. The demons also have convention. Uh, they have special moments where they say today these people are too free. Let's have some convention and torment them the more. And so the children of God, it's also much appropriate for us. The Bible says whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And so these are moments where we rise up with a greater expectation. And we come before the Lord. And we say, Lord, we want you to do something special. You see, and when you come with such a heart, so he was saying expectation. Expectation is basically saying be a faith person. Faith is all about expectation. Substance of things you have not seen. But you rise in your spirit and say, Lord, I believe. I believe. And so I'm coming. He said, so don't come. It's not normal Wednesday service. Come and, you know, like a Jessica and go come. Pinpoint something in your life. And say, Lord, I want you to do this for me. It could be just joy. I want my heart to be overflowing with joy. Lord, I just want to be able to worship you. Lord, I just want to be able to serve you with all my heart. There should be something in your heart that you expect from the Lord. And when you believe, you will receive it. Amen. So that is convention. That is why we are here. And this is day one. And it's our what? Thanksgiving convention. Amen. Amen. You have anything to thank the Lord for? I have so much to thank the Lord for. First, let's go, you know, to John chapter 9. John, the book of John chapter 9. It says, Jesus encountered somebody one time who was born hmm, lame. Who was born blind from the mother's womb. Hallelujah. John chapter 9 said he passed by and saw a man who was born from his birth. This guy, what can you do? Uh, verse 1. Uh, I saw a man which was born from what? His birth. And what happened to him? From his birth, he could not see. And then the disciples asked him, Who has sinned? Oh, I don't have my glasses. Who has sinned? See, I can't even see from there. I have to be here. <laughs> Amen. And then he said, No, nobody has sinned. Mm? Is it the parents that have seen that this person, we all are born and you give us eyes to see. Human beings are supposed to have eyes so they can walk in this world. If they don't have eyes, they cannot walk. And so the first thing that religious people know is we have to be able to point some fingers. We have to be able to dip into why is this thing happening? Mm? Why everybody is healthy. Thank you. Everybody is healthy and you alone. Huh? Everybody is rejoicing and you alone. Why? 
And you see, mostly it's not only religious people, we ourselves begin to ask ourselves, what sin did my father commit? How? Uh, and we begin to go into the ancestral history to see what sin have somebody committed. But tonight, as you hear, the Lord is saying, it is not because anybody has committed the sin. It is because he wants to glorify his name through you. Amen. Amen. So sometimes it's not about you. When the Lord earmarks to do something, uh, sometimes it's not about you. It's about him. So he said, no, 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 no. It is not that anybody has done anything, but I want my name to be glorified. Amen. Let's go from verse 28. See, from 28. He said, well, then they reviled him and said, and so you know the story. Jesus healed this man. But it was a day for religious people. I've been going to church for 20 years. When they say convention have expectation, oh no, I don't have any expectation anymore. Huh? What a shock. What kind of expectation? And so the guy was healed. And then the religious people began to question. Amen. Amen. Who is this? Doesn't he know that it's a day you cannot do such a thing? <laughs> Here. This is the day you, you cannot do this kind of thing. How do you go opening people's eye when it's the day for us to go to our religious, you know, yeah. The rituals need to be performed to what? So they questioned the guy. They reviled and said, thou art his disciple. So they brought the guy yeah, and said, tell us what happened? Is it true? They brought the parents. This guy who is matured, <laughs> huh? they brought the parents because what? There is doubt. We want to really, did get, this guy even do this? Okay. Find every means to demean what the Lord will do. Find every way in their heart. This is time like this. There could be just gathered, gathering of what? Religious people. Religious people, they have no faith. Religious people have no expectations. Religious people are all about the rules, do's, and don'ts. Yeah. And when you have a gathering of religious people, nothing happens. Their expectations are all about what they think they know. Meanwhile, they don't know anything. So they brought him. They questioned him. And they brought the parents. And the parents also said, no, you're not going to put me in any trouble. This guy is old enough to answer for himself. And so you ask him. So when he asked the guy, the guy said, hey, they revile. So they say you. And say, well, they revile. Revile means they were rebuking him. Or in other words, they were sitting on his. They want him to tell I. See, the point, coerce him to the point where Eh? And they said what? Thou art his disciple. But you see, but we are Moses' disciples. Moses. We are who? Moses' disciples. You, you are, next verse, 29. We know that God spake to Moses. Look, I've been going to church for 15 years. Look, when the Holy Spirit falls on me, I mean, things and you see so you see the word there we 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 know we know mm -hmm. i i know i mean now that you are even talking right now it's only a respect to you, that's what came so you just hurry up and let me get out of here because what as for this fellow don't we see him every day here and it's a convention <laughs> For what? As for this fellow, we know not from where he even comes from. Where does he even come from? Who is he? As for this fellow. Then the man answered, okay, said to them, why? Hearing is a marvelous thing. The Lord is not a respecter of person. Amen. Spirit of the Lord, 
will do what he will do. I say he will open the mouth of babies to speak. Amen. Because donkeys can even open their mouth mm-hmm. to speak. As is the God we serve. Amen. So he was telling them, you know Moses, you know all the laws, you know all, and look at all your big dresses. Yeah, the sanctuary is all for you. It's all everywhere. It's you. But why hearing, in other words, I mean, see, this is a marvelous thing, right? That you know that from whence he is, and yet he has opened my eyes. You know him. But what you are not understanding is that I'm blind. And do you, do you get a picture? Yes. So you can say anything about this man. Whatever you think. Yeah, you saw him yesterday. You see, five years ago, he was a carpenter, right? So he was selling coffin for your brother's funeral. <laughs> but at this very moment right now, right now, you ought to apply your wisdom a little bit. Because what you're saying, if you say you know Moses, then you know that, you know, next verse, nobody has ever done this. Eh? Now, he's lecturing them. Don't let a baby stand and lecture you. Because of the smallness of your faith. Now we know that God hears not sinners. But even a man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he hears. Amen. So he said, But don't you guys know this? So even, even if we accept that this fellow, we don't even know where he's from. We don't want no, but you know that the fellow by himself cannot do what he has done. Because in your book, it is very clear that these kind of things do not just happen. Huh? And so, don't think about the fellow. Think about the power in your book that is able to do this, and that is what you should be glorifying, and not speak against what has been done. And since the world began. Was it no head that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? Have you seen that before? Which means it was rare to have those things happen. That is why they call the parents. They are unbelievers. Meanwhile, they were what? The Christians. Huh? But the Christians who were supposed to know the word of God, who were to, supposed to know the promise of Jehovah, who are supposed to know the Lord who says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy lady, and I will give you. No, they were questioning. Hmm? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. Is that not it? Yes. Tonight, I just want to read some scriptures for you. Huh? If this man, next verse says what? They answered and said to him, Thou was altogether born in sin. And does thou now teach us? And they cast him out. What to verse 28? Verse 28. No, so Jesus, okay, let me finish that. Jesus came and then heard that they cast him out of. See, sometimes we're so religious. We are so, you know, righteous. Now, we want to cast some others out of. The sanctuary because they don't look righteous they don't look like me they don't pray like me you know when when you see them they they know why are they even in church they don't have a place here but so when jesus heard that they cast him out jesus came to him and then he found him and he said oh do you believe in the son of god in other words, let me see you and them. Is there any difference? Is there any difference between you and those other ones? There are millions that go to church. There are millions that profess that they are Christians. But I want to check from you. Is there any difference? Why do you think Jesus will be asking him? I want to, I mean, Truly, there are many Israelites. I mean, they are all. But do you believe in the Son of God? And that is why the guy now answered and said, What? Lord, who is he? 
that are my belief. You see, God wants to manifest himself personally to you. It it is not that the parents have done anything, but I want to glorify. The problem, that issue, it is that the Lord sometimes earmarks you for a time of glorification. He wants to visit you personally. He wants to reveal himself to you all personally. Because that is the conversation. The conversation here is that Jesus is now trying to reveal himself to this blind man who nobody really cared about. Who the most bishops and popes and, you know, cast out of the church. And Jesus said, today, I'm going to reveal myself to you personally. Okay. Personally. I'm going to because the Lord has to. I see somebody tonight. The Lord has just located you. And the Lord wants to do something great in your life. The Lord wants to touch you in a very special way. Then he said, who is he? That's why if you don't know him, you come to him with a mouth, we say words of belief. I believe, Lord. Because our heart is flowing. I say, who is he? It's leading him to salvation. Then the next verse says, what, 38? 38, my dear. Why, well, only two days and then you have changed. What's wrong with you? And he said, Lord, I believed. And then the place I want you to say is, the moment he said he believed, what did he do? He worshipped him. Have you seen the picture? The moment he said, Lord, I believe. The difference and what it takes for you to be able to receive the manifestation of the Lord in your life. It's for you to believe. And when you believe, you worship him. You worship him. Worship is where your heart now is connected to what you're doing. That's what makes a difference. That is what makes a difference between one who calls himself Christian and another who also calls himself Christian. That is why the Lord will say on that day, you, you call me Lord, Lord, but I will say, I don't know you. Because there is a difference between those who serve the Lord, those whose hearts are connected, those who believe in the Lord, and yes. those who don't believe in the Lord. Yes. I say you are Pope. But you didn't believe. I say you were reverend. But you didn't believe. So you were cardinal. Huh? Or you were whatever in the church. But you didn't believe. <laughs> Hallelujah. I go to verse 28. See, verse, verse 30. Give me verse 30. You see, tonight, we say it's a Thanksgiving. It's a Thanksgiving convention. Thanksgiving is basically you recognizing someone in a way that you want to worship the person that you want to be able to say thank you Amen. see just just and i said this before just think about it hmm? if if you are able to thank someone for something that the person has done the next time you even want to ask the person it increases your faith that the person can do it for you again is that not true yes. Yeah. You see, and my kids, they are very wonderful at doing that. Oh, yeah. You see, I don't like them eating McDonald's, for instance. But you see, these wonderful kids, the moment you go through all your, and say, okay, fine. See, that is the prayer. The Lord sometimes just allow it just because of the love he has for us. And when I go, immediately I get the older one will say, thank you, dad. Then the younger one will say, thank you, dad. You see, that touch to the stand that next time when you didn't want to do it, you remember that they, they, they thank you. And when they are saying that thank you, the next time they say it again, that give us, even though they know that this man doesn't want them, they have great expectation that he will do it. Hallelujah. 
That is why Thanksgiving is the greatest. So my topic tonight, you know, it said Thanksgiving, the key to great miracles. Amen. Thanksgiving, Amen. Uh, the key is the key to what? Great miracles. Miracles. Miracles will happen when you learn to give thanks. Because the moment you say thanks, you basically say, Lord, I appreciate. And if, Lord, I can appreciate this more thing, then I believe that there is nothing you cannot do. You love me so much that you even you did this for me. And thankful people are the ones who, you see, there are some unthankful people or unthankful children. The, the issue is they become like the religious people I'm talking about. I deserve it. It's mine. It's even long overdue. Uh, I came to this convention, Lord, I mean, it's long overdue. Yeah. So when it says something even happened, you're not me. That one is it's long because I'm entitled to it. Do you know how long I've been coming to church? I'm entitled to. And so there is no thankfulness in our heart. Go to Mark chapter 1. There is no thankfulness in our heart. The beginning of the gospel. Mark chapter 1. And let's go to around verse 20. See. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord. Go to 29. Oh, let's do 21. And they say, and they went into Capernaum. Mm -hmm. And straight away on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and he taught them. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that has authority. Huh? And not like who? The they were astonished. See, this man, who is he? <laughs> huh? And there was in the synagogue a man with unclean hand. But go to 40. You see, so here, they're like, this guy now is talking with some authority. Because what? He's not what? Lie the scribes. Who are the scribes? The scribes are the ones that ask big questions. Where is he from? What is the name of the mother, the father? Joseph, and Ma don't we know them? Their brothers and sisters, don't we know all of them? When did he also begin to say big words? Hey. Hallelujah. Amen. And there came a leper to him. <laughs> yes. Besieging him. I want you, your eyes to open, you see. Miracles, you know, are for people who believe. Amen. Miracles are for people who open their heart. See, that is why on a Sunday to Sunday, you know, well, nothing happens to people because they become just religious. We become very religious, dogmatic people. Who we'll come on a, there's, there's, there's nothing in you that is actually yanking you see the way there is besieging you don't recognize hmm? when you come to the presence and begin to recognize that oh, besieging so this guy came which means the guy recognized that there is something Amen. there's a great expectation that this guy can do something remember the scribes and what well, he came to the church and started preaching Hmm? The scribes and the Pharisees, they also come and preach. He said, somebody, there were many people there, but at least one person recognized that, ah, this guy, something. And so what did he do? He went and was besieging him. In other words, it wasn't just giving freely. Bible is not saying, and then he just opened it freely. The guy came and was besieging Beverly was besieging. A heart 
you know, is babbling. This guy has something. I want it. I need it, Lord. I know you can do it. I know. Yes. He was besieging him and knelt down to him and saying to him, I know, I know if you will, you can make me whole. You can do it, Lord. See, so whilst the guy was preaching, this guy's heart was connected. Immediately, the opportunity came, he ran. He said, I know you can do it. I know you have the power. I know you have the authority. You see, I need to be clean. This thing has been going on for too long. This is the day. And I know, if thou wilt, in other words, it is not that you cannot do it, but it's only if you, if you choose to. If you choose to do it, you can do it. And Jesus, why would the Lord not be moved with compassion? The Lord says, your level of faith. He says that you have no out of doubt that he's able to do what he's able to do. It's not that he doesn't have the power to do, but he's able to do. So Jesus put forth his hand. I see the hand of Jesus stretch out Amen. right now. He's putting forth on those who believe. Yes. I don't know what you brought into his presence tonight. What heavy heart you have. What tears have been flowing on your pillow. What ridicules you have been enduring. What pains you have been going through. He said, as many as believe, to them he gave power. Power is flowing. And you have been healed. You have been delivered. You have been taken out of your troubles. The Lord is making way where there seems to be no way. Giving you joy in your heart. He put forth his hand. And he touched him. And said to him, I will be clean. I will. You touch me so much by your faith. You touch me so much. See, all around, I could just see searching faces. I could just see doubting faces. I could just see people who don't. But you touch me. And I'm ready right now to do it. <coughs> Declares. And Jesus moved with compassion. Next one. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him. Amen. May you be cleansed in Jesus name. Amen. The delivering power of the Lord. Amen. It is for all the children. Amen. It's if we are children, then we are heirs of righteousness of God. The power of God raise you up. Can you play something for me? In Jesus' name. Power of the Most High flow through you. The impossible become possible. What people think will destroy you, you will rise and you will shake yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ. John chapter 6. I have made you too small in my eyes, oh Lord. Forgive me, and I have believed in a lie that you were unable to help me, but now. Oh Lord, I see my wrong. In my heart, I show yourself strong. And in my eyes, and with my song. Oh Lord, right now, be my magnify thy power, Lord. Oh Lord. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed. The word is 
they followed. They followed. Great multitude followed. Because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased. Great multitude followed. They don't only come to church because they believe. They follow. They're pressing on. Hard towards the mark of righteousness. Every encounter with the Lord is because, Lord, I know you. I believe in you. I know what you are capable of doing. Great multitude followed because they understand who the Lord is. And Jesus went into a mountain and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, the feast of the Jews was nigh. And when Jesus then lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company come to him. He said to Philip, when shall we buy bread that they may eat? There's a place of miracle that takes thanksgiving to receive the miracle. Amen. Amen. Do you believe? It's a place of miracle. They followed. They pressed on. They came. Great multitude. Jesus is a compassionate Jesus. His heart for his children is full of compassion. Say, I'm the heavily breasted one. When you come, it gives you milk. You, you don't go hungry. The enemy will have no access to you. This he said just to prove him. For he himself knew what he would do. How the Lord has been proving us. He knows already. You think the Lord doesn't know your problem? You think the Lord doesn't know your situation? You think he has no idea about what is going on? But this he said. When he said worship me. It is for your sake. Whatever he tells you, <coughs> see, that is why the mother told, you know, it's, whatever he says, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Believe in the Son of Man. Believe in the Son of God. Philip answered, 200 penny worth. He won't even shut up to. Can you see our Christian life all in this? A searching heart. Or doubting hearts. Yeah. A doubting hearts. It, it will do nothing. You see these people, it's almost like you, this man. The other time these Pharisees were talking, it looked like, <laughs> should I believe them? What is wrong with you? Huh? That is why, you see, only 12 of us remain with you. You see, all the other ones, they left. When you were talking about eating your flesh and drinking your... You see, they all went. Well, we, we are the only ones here. How can you look at all these people and look at what you are talking about? The disciples have also become the Pharisees and Sadducees. Those that are supposed to be the ones that are seeing the glory of God and are rising up in the power and the glory. Because what happened? The previous verses, what does it say? It said the people came because they saw what? The miracles that he has done. But his disciples are now questioning. Do you see the picture? So they should have already known that these people are here because you did some great miracle. You opened somebody's eye. You People are running and walking and you see food. You have even first and thought that this guy is a magician. Things are going to happen. So let's just say, Lord, what do you want to do? Do what you want to do. But he said, what? Are you out of your mind? It won't even be sufficient. Then we have too much time. And then the next verse says, what? One of his disciples, Andrew Simon Peter, then remembered that this guy, you should tonight be rising up and believing. See, I hope you are getting the scriptures. This guy now, now his mind now went to the fact that, look, this man just did some marvelous things. 
That is why he's saying there are two fishes and five loaves. Look, the previous scripture, what were the other guys saying? Even when we go and buy this wealth of this, it won't fit. How do you think somebody else will now be saying there are two fishes and three? Have you ever thought about it? So somebody is rising and begin to believe that this man is capable of doing anything. This man is capable of doing anything. So this large two fish, and now let's put him to the test. That's what Jesus was waiting for. Do you believe? Are you able to lay your burdens down so I can carry it? Heal our hearts and make us clean, Lord. Open up our eyes to the things that I'm saying. To the things that I'm saying. And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. And then you relax. Now you are tapped into the realm that you should tap into. He said, It's just like you're sitting here. If you can just write like this, disciples, and begin to see the possibilities, then you will begin to bring the burden before Him. Because until the guy saw the possibility, Jesus was just looking at them. You see the possibility that I'm able to do it. He said, oh, there's a two fish and five loaves. I said, yeah, you're seeing the possibility now that there's nothing impossible in the realm where I exist. Amen. And as you begin to rise in that realm, I said, Jesus said, relax there. Just sit at my feet and watch me. Watch me do it. Watch me. But I want to teach you something. Huh? The next verse says what? And Jesus took the loaves. There is a place for miracle. But what it takes is for you to know how to give thanks. And he wants to show us. This one's come by a mighty force. So Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed when he has done what? Did he have all night? No. Or he went now and said, Where is Brother Ben? Let's with five, ten minutes giving thanks. How many seconds is that? Lord, I thank you that you are able to do all things. And when he has done that, he said, Just just distribute it. And they started distributing, started distributing, started distributing, started distributing, started distributing. Because the source of the power is the Lord Jesus demonstrating faith in his highest form. Lord, I thank you that you have done it. Some come. See the church chasing prophets. Pull your hand. Boom. Kick me. Wow. After that, they don't even have any faith. That the kicking and the knocking they've given has even done anything. (laughs) Instead of they just rising up in thankfulness. See, that is why from January up to now, they don't even recognize the power of God. You see, something happened. And I was so happy that the Lord hid it from me till two days ago. I was very excited. When I knew, you see, that it was hidden from me until this very moment. While I was having some conversation, it was someone, beginning of the year, we were all here, right? And then the prophet spoke a prophecy that this year will be a year of what? Good things. Good things. Hey. Okay. Amen. She's in the spirit. Amen. Amen. It will be a year of good things. And I remember it was, I think, April. This lady is a sister in the church. She came to me. I said, Yeah, what really do you desire? She said, I want to be pregnant. I want to have a child. And I look at her. My heart was broken. And I said, Lord, 
please do it. Amen. Do it for her. Because while my heart was broken, it's, I observe her. I know she loves the Lord. When she sits in the congregation, I see her countenance. I know that she has faith and the Lord can do it. So I only said, let's pray. May the Lord do it for you. And according to your faith and your belief, you will say. And he said the following month, which is so April, May, she took a seat. And I have no idea that even the Lord has answered the prayer. Until two days ago, I was talking to my wife. And then, you know, this person came and I said, oh, this person. I said, oh, I'm really believing the Lord that the Lord will do. It's great. And he said, no, but she's pregnant. I said, pregnant? No. I said, she's pregnant. When I called her today, my, my heart was just overflowing. You see, the Lord gave thanks. There is a place for miracles. Amen. Sometimes it's not what we think. It is the state of your heart. Amen. Go. My last scripture I will show you. John chapter 11. Place of thanksgiving. And I'm closing soon. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now a certain man was sick. Named Lazarus of Bethany. The town of Mary. And the sister Martha. And then you know the story. So just go to maybe around 20. Somewhere there. Let's see. The matter, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming. And so they told, you see, the relationship we have. Church, it's about your relationship. In this town, there were so many people. But they said this family, they were so much connected to the Lord. That he had, his heart breaks. When he came to tell him that, they didn't just say a church member. They say your friend. Is sick to death. It defined that in that Jesus ministry, there were people that he he because this is the only place you hear that Jesus cried. He wept. His heart was full. Some places you say he had compassion, but here it's beyond because it this is defined by a relationship. It's a place for miracle. And so when they called him, he said, the last time there was a widow. You remember they were going to the cemetery. I met them on the way and I healed. And then the people said, okay, maybe the baby wasn't even dead. And she was just sleeping. So, and so now allow the guy to die. <laughs> Basically, that's what he was saying, right? Allow him to die. And four days later, the guy appeared. And then Martha came and said, I thought you love us. But then Martha said something. Let's, let's read on. As soon as then the next verse it says, Well, I want your faith to rise. Then Martha said unto him, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not had would not have died. I had every faith you are believing you to do the point into no nonsense degree and know what you carry. If only you have been here. Hmm? This man, that sickness cannot take him down. Because sickness is when they hear your voice. When they hear your name. They hide. They cannot take him down if you have been here. But, you see, the next verse is the powerful. But even now. Even now. Huh? Whatsoever I know, you will ask your father, he will give it to you. See, preempted. She preempted. You see, when Jesus is crying, Jesus is not crying because Lazarus is dead. People think Jesus is crying because Lazarus is dead. But the guy himself said, Oh, let him die. So why will he come crying that the guy is dead? Huh? You see, because you go to next few verses. He says, and Jesus what? Wept. Maria, are you sleeping? Next verse. Are you catching anybody watching your phones? 
But these young ones, they won't be hearing nothing. They'll be doing something else. Are you getting spoiled now? Because your attention is not on me anymore. Amen. Then Jesus said to her, Thy brother shall rise again. And when he said, Mother said to him, I know. You see the conversation. This is somebody who has faith. Believe strongly. I know that he will rise on the resurrection. Because the guy is already dead. We buried him. And we put him. So I know that when the resurrection comes, he's going to rise. And then, next one. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, even though you, you will live. Nothing, nothing, nothing will trouble you. And then the next verse, and whosoever liveth and believe will never die. Next, quick, quick. And she said, you know, blah, blah, blah. So go from 30. From 30. Now Jesus was not come yet into the town. So, you know, Mary also went to meet. So go to 35. Start from there. And then Jesus did what? He wept. Because now, he realized these people have faith. Because when Mary also came, Mary also was professing the faith that they have in their See, this man that they have been encountering every day, they recognize there's something more powerful than the eyes can see. So Jesus wept. And then what happened? Then said the Jews, Behold, how much he laughed. See? Oh, yeah. They're thinking, Oh, how much he laughed. And he laughed them, but he said he should die. Huh? And then, and some of them said, Could not this man have, you see? <laughs> the religious people. Even when they are, which they say they are worshiping him, their hearts are far. They just said, oh, see how much he laughed? But then the next moment, say, look at him. <laughs> they had to far away. And if he has to look at those religious people, he can do nothing. Faithless generation. Brutal vipers. And then the next verse says, I want to show you then, wait. Jesus therefore, again, groaning in his spirit. Say, hey, where is the grave? May the Lord groan in his spirit tonight as he sees you. As he looks upon you. As he beholds you. See, your closeness, your relationship with him, the conversations you have with him will make the Lord to groan in his spirit. Next verse. And Jesus said, take the stones away. And Martha, the sister of him that was there, said, Lord, this thing is thinking. The Bible had not put it here. That is why he said, let me stay for four days. These guys, until you get to nonsense degree, they don't even believe. So let us say it's think. And we all know that the thing is rotten and it's thinking. And nobody has ever raised somebody who is thinking. Never. Only Jesus in a grave for four days. And then Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you tonight that if only you believe, you will see the glory of the Lord? Did I not? Did I not just a few minutes ago tell you that it only takes faith? It's only take you looking up to me and believing and then they took away the stone and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said Father I did what I thank you that thou hast heard me Amen. thankfulness is a key to great miracles Amen. thankfulness shows a heart of appreciation 
fullness show a heart that is yearning and say, I trust in you. Father, I trust in you. I thank you. It is even for just the sake of this people that I say this. But I know that whatever I ask you, you never deny me. If only we can rise to that level as Christians. Rise to the level of believing and knowing that you can also rise up and say, Father, I thank you that you hear me. I know that when I call you, if only we all can rise to that. Because that is the place where no matter what is happening, you say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you that this situation is no unto death. Thank you that this situation is not to distraction. Thank you that this situation it is not for my distraction. But that your glory will be seen. We can rise to that realm. So we will see great miracles. See great miracles in our life. Great miracles in everything that pertains to us. Jesus is calling to us. Just believe. He said, Who is he? That I will believe. He said, He, me, never speak to you. I am here. He said, He bowed down in worship. So we write to our faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want you to rise to a different realm right now. I want to pray for you tonight. And I trust and I believe that the Lord who answers by fire, the Lord. Who says yes, he does not answer huh? those who do evil. That is what the scripture huh? tells us. John chapter 9. Hmm? He said, The Lord, verse 30, the Lord does not answer huh? those who do evil. But anyone who works righteousness, when he asks, and so tonight I want you. Whatever issues you have, it could be sickness. Wherever is paining you, you just put your hand on there. If you have more than one sickness, just put your hand on your head. But locate where the trouble is. It could be broken heart. It could be anything that has troubled you to the point of destroying your very life. There is no joy. There is no happiness. I want you tonight, if you trust the Lord, the one who calls forth and says, Lazarus, come forth. I know you were dead. For four days, you are rotting and stinking. That stinking problem, he doesn't stink before the Lord, for he knows all things. It is not for distraction, but it is for the glory of the Lord. So I want you tonight, to rise in the faith. I want you to believe right now. Believe in the Lord that is able to do all things. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you. So put your hand anywhere you want the power of God to touch. If it's emotional, if it's anything that is not pain in the body, just put your hand on your head. And let's ask the Lord to do it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, I just recounted your words that demonstrated the power and the glory. And I stand on those words. And I thank you. Thank you that we gathered tonight. And we did not only gather, but we gathered in faith. We believe in your power to touch our situations. We believe in you raising up your hand. Lord, unto that impenetrable place. Yes, Lord. It could be called any name. High blood pressure, cancer. Those are just names that human beings have given. But the Lord, when you created this body, say you saw it as good 
And so tonight, stretch forth your hands, Holy Spirit. Touch each and every one. As your hands, Lord, are touching those places. As your hands, Lord, are stretched forth right. I believe it's your hand touching right now. And I thank you that you have done it. I thank you that you have taken away pain. I thank you that you have taken away distraction. I thank you that you have healed, Lord God, a disease. The thing that is, Lord, waiting to destroy. That right now, you're breaking down barriers, Lord. Frustrations are taken away. Depressions are gone. In the mighty name of Jesus. Expectations, Lord, I met. For we came with expectations. And we are not walking out the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you've done it. May you receive all the glory and receive all the honor. In Jesus' name. Amen.